Good morning. <coughs> so most time. This is our Saturday morning class. It starts at 9.30 USA Eastern Time. Today's class is special class. Today we are starting our program called Continuing Medical Education. This is called a Category 1 ACCME. ACCME is called Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education approved by the American Medical Association for the physicians. The physician needs to have a 30 hours of continuing medical education to continue their license. We started the first category one continuing medical education for the physician with the collaboration of Life in Yoga Institute, Raja Narwan, and another researcher from Harvard, Sadbir Khalsa. We started in 2010. We've been doing it in person twice a year in May and September. Last year we had to stop for pandemic. This year we're starting online. So today's program, it's a Facebook Live. It's the beginning of the practice session for our continuing medical education. The title is Overview of Yoga Therapy for Healthcare Providers. Basically, the practice is integrating or how to integrate a yoga therapy with a Western medicine. Now, as all of you know, the yoga is a philosophy called Yoga Sutra Patanjali, 196 sutras, of which 193 is to quiet down your mind. Practice is called Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, Eight Limbs of Yoga. There is the Eight Limbs of Yoga, Iyam, Social Restraint, Niyam, Personal Restraint, Asana, Alignment, both external and internal alignment, grounding poses, pranayama, voluntary regulated breathing, pratahara, control of your senses, dharan is the focus, seventh is your meditation, is your uh, seventh limb, and uh, eight is your meditation. So, <clears throat> able to use this philosophy and the practice in a patient for different clinical condition is yoga therapy. And we'll be practicing today how to integrate that with our Western medicine, especially with the patients with a chronic medical condition. Now this program is also a session through somatic space, yoga and healing studio, of which we are part of it and we are doing it for last almost 15 years. We'd like to share with you a loss of our loved ones. The founder and the owner of the Satik Space Yoga and Healing Studio 
Maury Cook and Audrey Cook. We lost Audrey last Monday. She left us and to keep her soul to rest in peace. Let's observe a moment of silence before we proceed our session. Thank you. Audrey, we wish wherever you are, we are with you. Also, Maury, we are here for your support. Now, all the people with the healthcare providers, the first and foremost requirement a patient comes to you with a chronic condition. Could be a physical, a back pain, neck pain, hip pain, knee pain, and yoga therapy, which is a relaxation response, activation of parasympathetic tone, is a wonderful, wonderful therapy. There is no therapy better than yoga therapy for chronic low back pain. It has been documented, written up, multiple publications. So we start with some uh, physical practices. Then learning how to do it. Somebody comes with a respiratory problem, we try to incorporate after relaxation response, how to incorporate a voluntary regulated breathing. When you prepare your body and breath, body in yoga therapy is called sthiram sukham asana. Sthiram means stillness. I'm sitting here, I'm still. Sukham, I'm happy. Asana is a pose. That is the most therapeutic asana created in yoga therapy. For the breath, lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. We need 1.5 liter to keep the lung open. You have a 4.5 liters can be exchanged called vital capacity. We only breathe only 500 cc. You learn how to breathe out. Then slowly take a deep breath in without any effort and breathe out longer than breathing in. The breathing has to be total effortless ease. Effortless ease breathing, exhalation longer than inhalation. Exhalation is parasympathetic, inhalation is sympathetic. By the time you prepare your physical body and breath, slowly you enter into meditation. You don't practice meditation. Meditation comes to you. Meditation is the seventh limb. The practice is not yoga and meditation. Meditation is yoga. Yoga is meditation. At the state of meditation, we call meditation is medication. It's a medicine cabinet of your mind. At the level of your meditation, body secretes all the medication which you are taking from outside. Body is capable of producing all the pharmaceutical components which you take from outside to control your chronic diseases. And also a practice of this relaxation response and activation of parasympathetic tone 
essentially unblock your body's own healing power. Our body has an inherent healing power which gets activated by the practice of yoga. The patient comes to you, you are as a yoga therapist, you said you now the best practice to do is to do a say sun salutation. That patient is going to run away from you. So you have to learn in yoga therapy how to integrate that, how to incorporate, how to bring the yoga therapy to that patient. The first component, able to sit down in a chair, either in ground, wherever you are, with your spine straight. In yoga it's called a merudanda acha. So the moment you sit down with your spine straight, think about my skeleton normally is going to fall in the front. When my back muscles are tightened up to keep me erect, straight, and the whole back muscles are tight, it feels like a piece of brick here. The moment I start incorporating this relaxation response, I can feel, I can feel that these muscles are like your, like a two pillows sitting here. It's a wonderful experience. So patient comes to you, talk to the patient and say, okay, let's start with a little practice. Remember one thing. As our father of our Western medicine, Hippocrates say, I'm not interested about the disease a person has, I'm interested about the person who has the disease. Yoga therapy says exactly the same thing. Yoga therapy is not a reductionist, it is a holistic. You know, we'll show you, the moment we do some relaxation response of our upper part of our body, your back pain will go away, hip pain will go away. The moment we do a, a Kapalbhati Pranayama, which will do it very shortly, you will see this is called a metabolic pranayama. It ignites our digestive fire. It corrects a lot of our underlying condition called metabolic syndrome. So, if you even sitting in a chair, let me show you how you will be able to sit down in a chair. This is just a, a simple chair which you can use or you can show it to you. I'll show you a different kind of chairs which you use. When you sit in a chair, you'll be sitting in a chair. If you sit in the front, you'll keep your spine straight. You're grounding, spine straight, looking straight. That's the way you're using your keyboard, you're looking at a computer screen. That's the way you're going to eat your food, that's the way drive your car, 24 seven, all the time. If you go to the back of the chair, you can go to the back of the chair, you can put your back all the way. If you cannot, put anything underneath your feet, you get a folded blanket and slowly and slowly a phenomenon will take place called neuroplasticity which will be your able to sit down in this posture. Initially you may have a little discomfort, when you have a discomfort you back off where you are and also Listen to your breath. Your breath has to be completely effortless. There is a chair which I use all the time. This is called your kneeling stool. <coughs> In a kneeling stool, you sit down with 
to the knees and your spine always remains straight and that's where you sit down and sit down all the time and I use the kneeling stool for all my sitting down I will sit down in a, in a kneeling stool I'll sit down in front of my computer throughout my, my whole day the first incorporation of yoga therapy to Western medicine is that able to sit with your spine straight 24 7 when you can sleep your bed has to be a hard mattress so that your spine remains a straight next one is called manasthik to quiet down your mind in yoga therapy we believe that our body is like a hardware mind is a software and spirit is the programmer who is the programmer I am the programmer I reprogram my software which is my mind and my mind takes care of my body as simple as it is we have we are going to show it to you we have a reductionist approach we do this 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 for diabetes this this for hypertension this for your asthma this is for COPD we do it all the time but this is called a transition transition means if you do that for a short time you'll get immediate result if you do thunderbolt pose if you do a call with a frog pose if you do a kabalbhati pranayama blood sugar is going to come down but for your diabetes you take a medication every single day so you have to incorporate a practice which will cause a transformation transformation is called neuroplasticity and that will be the permanent therapy that's what our goal is your hand connects with your mind the moment you think something your hand gesture goes higher first to like something you will say like this before you say oh it's beautiful very tasty very nice want something you put a hand further and say please give me something so hand is called the mudras we'll talk about it mudras we'll talk about it tomorrow a program hand gestures the mudras mudras are a neurophysical connector to move the prana the life force to the organ of healing mudras quite down our mind and you see the mudras we'll talk about it the yogic concept, Ayurvedic concept, the five elements the universe is made of your space, air, fire, water, earth and all the five elements are in your fingers you will see if you touch your index finger and thumb just gently put over your knees close your eyes because the five senses I see I hear I smell I test and I touch contents of your five senses is your mind if you can quiet down your mind it will reprogram your software mind quieting down is like that updating your software you can do the same thing on sitting in a chair. Every practice you are doing, you will be doing in a chair. Spine straight. Touch index finger and thumb. Close your eyes. Pay attention to your breath. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out longer than breathing in.
slowly if you can count, take a breath in, count of two in, count of four out, count of four in, count of eight out, slowly by practice, remember, you don't compete with anybody, you compete against yourself. Muscles of respiration, so called voluntary muscles, that can be trained. So do practice, if you're practicing with me, try. Try with the count of three in, one, and two and a three in, count of six out, very simple, but we're doing it for a long time, let me show it to you how to do easily, I can do count of six in and count of twelve out. Continue on that and just teach them the same, this fundamental principle to do it all the time, every single day. Mind will quiet down, and blood sugar will come down, heart rate will come down, blood pressure will come down, they will slowly enter into a meditative state. How do we know? We do it all the time. This is our, this is our Apple Watch gives all the health parameters, we are checking it. So, in, I'm giving you the steps so you can able to use it and incorporate. Spine straight, stillness, happiness, pose. If you get any and no pain, if you get a pain here, you back off. But stay where there is no pain and also listen to your breath. Any imbalance in your physical body will show up in your breath. Maybe in few days, a few weeks, for somebody, a few months, this thing will happen to you without knowing. The moment it happens, you can always progress. I can put a heel in the back, put your feet. So this is called your easy, <clears throat> easy pose to a perfect pose. Sukhasan to the Siddhasan. Next component is when you finish your doing, pumping and cupping. You keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hands, if you're wearing glasses, you remove your glasses, take the hands, put it over your eyes, let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. It relaxes the ciliary muscles. When the ciliary muscles are relaxed, the lens becomes more convex. You don't need a reading glasses. Whole eyes gets relaxed. Eye is supplied by the four cranial nerves. The four cranial nerves quiets down. Massage your forehead, massage your eyes in the face. All the muscles in the face are attached to the skin. When the muscle is attached, you get all the wrinkles, so get all the lines, all the frownings, they all goes away and skin becomes smooth. Massage back of your ear, front of your ear, inside your external ear canal. This is the auricular branch of vagus nerve. This is the activation of the vagus nerve with the activation of your parasympathetic tone. Bring the hand, massage the front of your neck. This is the massaging of carotid sinuses. Carotid sinus also activates your parasympathetic tone. It quiets down cardiovascular system and nervous system. Go to the back, massage the back of your neck. This is the insertion of two muscles trapezius muscle and sternocleidomastoid muscle, both are supplied by cranial nerve called accessory nerve. Once the cranial nerves quiets down, 
you enter into a profound parasympathetic mode. Parasympathetic is called craniosacral mode. That means all the parasympathetic term, tone comes from your, you know, in your cranium. That means your head and neck and sacrum in the, at the base of your spine. The rest of the spine is your sympathetic out. Now I'm comfortable, you can see, slowly and slowly, I can change my foot and always do it on both sides equally. See, also remember, if you are comfortable sitting this way in the Sukhasana, you always change your leg and see if you can sit in a crossing opposite way. Because you need to activate both sides of your brain. Could you activate both sides of the brain? Okay. So these are the simple way you incorporate. Next thing for your mind, your mind, as I said, with your hand mudras. Let me show it to you coming a bit closer so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Three states of your mind. We don't have any focus. I'm sitting down, I'm talking to you, we need to have a focus. When you put your hand, touch the tip of your index finger, this is called your Hakini Mudra. I'll show it to you all the mudras tomorrow, so you'll see Hakini Mudra. Hakini Mudra quiets down, your focus is your mind. Suppose you're listening, or even I'm talking to you, my hands become like this, me without knowing. Practice this, touching the tip of your finger. Shankha Mudra, if your mind is restless, call a conscious hand, right hand wraps your thumb, left hand wraps your other hand, touch your index finger and thumb, this looks like a conscious. You incorporate then in your practice at the beginning. This will remove the anxiety. Restless mind. Do the opposite way. Left hand, touch your arm. By the time you're mastering it, what you can do, you can do this with your eyes closed. When you close your eyes, you look and listen to your bodies, what is called your subtle body. My, uh, my eyes are closed, I can easily do it, one side, other side. Because when I close my eyes, I can clearly see my whole body. That is called your subtle body. Three bodies, we'll talk about it, gross, gross body, subtle body and causal body. Activate both sides of your brain for balance. A powerful yoga therapy practice will be to bring the balance back. Imbalance of our body creates all kinds of ill health. Health is defined as a balance of your body, mind and spirit. Dhenu mudra or shurubhi mudra. Touch opposite fingers. Right index finger touches left middle finger. Right middle finger touches left index finger. Right ring finger touches left little finger. Right little finger touches left ring finger. Touch both the thumb. Alternate is looks like an udder of a car. When you'll be able to do it, we can tell you by looking at this Apple Watch, all of your health parameters will get better and better to the opposite side. Right, left index finger touches right middle finger. Left middle finger touches right index finger. Right little finger touches, and left middle finger touches right ring finger. Left ring finger touches right little finger and the thumb. Can okay, do it, my eyes closed. My eyes are closed, I'm touching the fingers alternate fingers without any effort at all. That's your, that should be your practice. It's very, very important practice you need to continue. And then when the relaxation sets in, you can easily see, I can put one foot on the top. This is called your swastika asana or half lotus. If it causes any pain, you can back off. Find a posture where there is no pain. You do the same thing sitting in a chair. It's a wonderful practice. 
And once you're comfortable sitting like this, neuroplasticity sets in, you go ahead and do the opposite side. When you do the opposite side, your whole body starts to relax. This is a relaxation response. You see, I have a saliva in my mouth. My mouth is wet. When a mouth is wet, that means there is a parasympathetic activation. Now, when it's scared, when a, when a sympathetic overdrive, you get a dry mouth. So from here, you can see how easily I can get up, sit down. This is called your lotus posture, a Kalapad master. This is nothing but a relaxation response in a stepwise pattern to come here. Oh, I could used to do it before I cannot do it. Can I will be able to? Yes. In stages, impossible become possible. But don't do it at the first time. Do it in the slowly. Then all the relaxation we see from the babies. If you look at a baby, baby is completely relaxed. Baby's hand, it is called the way the relaxes hand. The baby will put the thumb inside and close. They call it baby fist, yogic fist. Do the breathing. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in and close your fist. Breathe in, breathe out. The moment you incorporate this relaxation response, wrist gets relaxed like this. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Shoulder. Put your hand on the shoulder. Bring your elbows together. No pain. If you get a pain here, you back off. Start where you can. Meet where you are. If you can bring it here, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. And slowly rotate your shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out. And do the opposite side. Breathe in, do that. Always balance yourself. See the simple asanas, this will have a profound effect in your body and mind. Hold your wrist, breathe out first, breathe in, put your head up behind your head. Breathe in. Always with your breathing, effortless breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. You can relax your neck and also relax your upper part of the body. Upper part of the body is called Paschim Namaskar, prayer pose to the back, and neck is called a Brahma Mudra, four postures of your neck. Before I do it, there are two other breathing techniques. One is called a Bumblebee breathing, which is controlling your five senses. It's called Brahmri Pranayam. And also what it does, it creates a frequency and brain has a frequency, two frequency interacts and cancels. We have eight limbs and able to pick and choose and incorporate for the patient or the client in need is yoga therapy. That's why yoga teachers training courses about 200 hours and yoga therapist is 800 hours. So I will show it to you so how to incorporate this bumblebee breathing with your asana practice for quieting down for all of your neuropsychiatric disorders, your autoimmune disorders and your imbalance in the physical and mind. I'll give you the disease, the name by name, but you have to understand the underlying concept. So here in a bumblebee, you put your index finger in the forehead, close your eyes in the three fingers, or you can close, it's called a Shanmukhi Mudra, put your thumb in your ear, and then you breathe out first. Remember, always breathe through your nostril. Take a deep breath in and breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Mm. 
Remember your breathing is followed by your coming and cupping. Do the coming and cupping throughout the whole day. It will relax your eyes, relax your head and neck, activate your vagus nerve and parasympathetic tone. And that is the therapy you need to incorporate for your chronic Western medical condition. Massage your auricular branch of vagus nerve, massage your carotid sinuses, massage the insertion of trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscle. Another breathing technique is called Ujjayi Pranayam. Ujjayi is able to control your larynx slowly and able to breathe in, it's called a resistive inhalation. In the process, the larynx is supplied by the branches of vagus nerve, superior laryngeal nerve, inferior laryngeal nerve. So you slowly constrict your larynx, you activate your vagus nerve. So the way you do it, initially you can do it very simply. <laughs> You can do a little bit more, you can tighten some more, this will sound like this. <coughs> Always get a cough when you do it, but the cough comes from a larynx. It's a wonderful technique to control your sleep apnea. It activates the Laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve. The signal goes to the brain stem and the signal comes out through glossopharyngeal nerve and hypoglossal nerve. Glossopharyngeal nerve activates the muscles in the soft palate, palatopharyngeus and palatoglossus. So your snoring goes away. Hypoglossal nerve pushes the tongue in front. It helps in a sleep apnea. Sleep apnea and insomnia is a root cause of our all lifestyle related disorders like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, frontal obesity, high cholesterol, all underlying cause is activation of your mind from insomnia and sleep apnea. So now you will see, first I will put my hand in the back, call a prayer pose to the back and see how simple it is. You put your hands to the back and always remember you start where you are. If you're here, it's okay. If you can put your hands together in a prayer pose, then slowly you will see if you keep it here, keep your spine straight, close your eyes and do the breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in, slowly and slowly, this will be like here. And able to stay in the posture in a stillness, happiness, asana, sthiram, sukham, asana. Now you see, this is a therapy for relaxation of your all the muscles and joints. Remember the pain. Pain comes from the tightness of the ligaments and the muscles. When my knee, when my knee joint is hallway arthritis, osteoarthritis, knee joint of inflammation called arthritis, you know, joint, cartilage doesn't have any pain fibers. The pain fibers are in the ligaments and the muscles. So when you have a damaged joint, body tightens up. Body tightens up your ligaments, tightens up your muscles. So what it does, it causes pain. Chronic pain, Therapy is a relaxation. So if I can put my hand to the back and able to do a, a prayer pose to the back, then I'm going to relax my neck. This is called a Brahma Mudra. It's a four positions of the neck. One will be putting in the back and the front and side to side, looking all the way at the back and turning the neck all around. Let me show you how to incorporate the breathing technique with this Brahma Mudra. First, you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in 
and slowly put your neck to the back. And breathe out and slowly drop your neck in the front. Listen to your body signal. There is no pain and effortless breathing. Effortless breathing means you can talk, you can sing. And slowly bring your neck to the front. You can do the same thing in the four other position. We incorporate a relaxation, a breathing technique called pranayama with asana practice as a part of yoga therapy incorporating in Western medicine. When I will be putting my head to the back, I'll be using a ujjayi pranayama. When I'm putting my head in the front, I'll be using a bumblebee or bastrika pranayama. I'm sorry, ah, <laughs> brahmi pranayama. Let's see how beautiful the practice it is. Breathe out first. With this, exhalation becomes longer than inhalation. We are side to side, same way. Breathe out first. Take a breath through Ujjayi Pranayam. All the way to the back without turning your shoulder. Rotate your neck to the left, to the back, to the right, right to the back, to the left. Do the same, breathing in with the Ujjayi Pranayam, breathing out with the Bumblebee or Brahmri Pranayam. still in the back. I'm in a profound level of relaxation. I'm having an activation of the parasympathetic tone and I'm going to sleep better. My whole metabolic syndrome is going to melt away. Remember the stress. Stress is an activation of sympathetic tone, sympathetic overdrive. Creates a hormone called a cortisol. 
Cortisol transfers your glucose to your elemental fat, the fat inside your stomach. It's not under the skin. This is called a truncal obesity. That fat secretes inflammatory molecule. The inflammatory molecule causes diabetes, hypertension, atherosclerosis, and dyslipidemia, or high cholesterol, <clears throat> or increased triglyceride and low HDL. So if you can correct your insomnia and sleep apnea, you correct your overall metabolic syndrome. Remember, there is used to be called your risk factors for heart disease, for diabetes. No, these are all together. Today we have a diabetes, tomorrow we'll have a heart disease. Today we have a heart disease, tomorrow we'll have a hypertension. Tomorrow we'll have a hypertension, tomorrow we'll have a high cholesterol. So when you're comfortable sleeping like this in a practice, you feel a level of lightness. It is called tholasa. You put your hands here, push it down, your whole body will go high up. Body will go high up, you'll be able to stay high up. It's a wonderful practice. But it will come in stages for you. All the all this back pain, knee pain, hip pain, all the people will be melting away with the call your mudra. Hold your hands to the back, keep your spine straight. Look, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in, slowly drop your body down. <coughs> Listen to your body signal. No pain, effortless breathing. Your whole head will come down, you touch the ground. Stay here between 5 to 10 breaths. Breathing out longer than breathing in with a profound level of relaxation. These are the techniques you need to incorporate at the beginning. So you have to create a wonderful relaxation response. Then you will be asking them to incorporate particular asanas and particular pranayama for different diseases which will come. I will come, I will bring the cases tomorrow We'll be doing all the complementary practices. We'll bring the cases. So I will bring it up slowly and slowly. But I'm showing you here just to integrate. For the lower part, sit down with your, call your dandasan. Hands on both sides, spine straight. Separate your toes, breathe in, breathe out. When you separate your toes, the feet get relaxed. Market is full of it. Yoga toes, yoga socks, yoga shoes. Ankle, ankle carries all the body weight. Relaxation, the breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Rotate, breathe in, rotate your ankle. A powerful experience. Once you do this asana practice, it will prepare your breath for your pranayama practice. Seated forward bend, Paschimottanasana. Hold your toes or wherever you can touch here is good. If you can come down, hold your toes is great. Keep your spine straight, look straight and slowly drop your body down. Keep breathing, be sure your breath is effortless. When you are relaxed, your whole body will come like this. You'll be able to clasp your hand. Your head will come down and touch your knee. Seated for a bend. When you get up, slowly get up in space. But once you get down, you stay there between 5 to 10 breaths. You can, you can Relax your knees and hips. Take your one foot on the top. Separate your toes. Take your finger, put it in between your toes. The toes are relaxed. It is very easy. It goes in and out. Take your knee. Bring it up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
sort of so breathe in slowly to the ground. It's a powerful practice. Into do the opposite side, just to balance. Hands in between your toes, separating, relaxing your feet and ankle. Knees relax, bring it up. Knee is the site of fear, hip is the site of emotion. Breathe in, breathe out. If it doesn't go down, if it is here, let it be here. Close your eyes, do the breathing, it will happen on its own. If you push it down, it will come back here. It's a beautiful way of doing it. Butterfly, Padmakonasan, put your feet together, bring it close to you, hands underneath, it relaxes your hip. Hip is a side of emotion. All the emotion related disorders. Today, one of the emotion related disorder is your hypertension, neuropsychiatric disorders. And there is no right, you don't have to go all the way, you know, just very gently and comfortably, both the knees will come down. One of the powerful relaxing asana is your say called Vaisasana. Put one knee in the top. Always do it both the sides, but let me show you only one side at a time so you will understand how to do it. For your all back pain, diabetes. Remember, pancreas is at the level of your vertebral body. So when you massage the pancreas, literally pancreas is squeezing out all the insulin from there. So all the spine, all the spinal movements, asanas are very good for you. Diabetes, like the one we just did, called Yoga Mudra. This is your say, called Ardhamat Sandra and Asan. In English translation, it calls half lot of the fish poles from your crossing the knee. See, this way, one knee in the top, both the knee get relaxed. You may have a lot of underlying condition, but your problem is the pain. When the pain goes away, you became, life became comfortable, especially for our age group. The left arm goes outside your right knee, right hand goes to the back, left hand is down here, slowly goes to the Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and slowly turn your neck to the opposite side. Stay here, and you'll see when you're turning. Once you turn a little bit more, your breath will catch. Come back to normal. You can do on the opposite side, but also a powerful therapeutic asana is called the Gomukhas and cow face. And let me show you the balance means. Both sides of your body has to act at the same time. You'll see one side is easier than the other side. So now my right knee is in the top of my left knee. Right hand goes high up, left hand is here. Let me stabilize my left hand in the middle. Right hand will come down, touch it, hook it. Essentially, I handshake each other. Look at the power of relaxation. The ankle is relaxed, knee is relaxed, hip is relaxed, back, upper part, shoulder, elbows, whole body. You are feeling one side is comfortable than the other side. Now do the opposite side. Now my left knee is in the top of my right knee. Left hand goes high up. Right hand is here. You stabilize, put the right hand in the middle. You have to come down. You touch it, hook it. Yes, and you can handshake each other. You'll see your one side is easier than the other side. When you're able to do it both sides equally, you're in a profound level of relaxation. Therapeutic asanas 
Govukhasana. Next therapeutic asana is your Vajrasana. Able to sit down. It's called a thunderbolt. The feet together first. And separate your feet. Spine straight. Thunderbolt, that Vajrasana, is the activator of your parasympathetic tone. All of our digestion, gastrointestinal tract is supplied by parasympathetic nerve. Whole digestive process is parasympathetic and we always do, we say food, we have to burn the food. Not the point. After eating, you sit down like a Vajrasana. Who do the practice in an empty stomach? Sit down in Vajrasana. So I'm telling you all the conditions and the asanas and pranayama you need to practice. Mandukasana, you can sit in the Vajrasana. It's called a frog pose. It's a wonderful asana for your diabetes and trunkal obesity. Use the fist like a baby. Put the level of the belly button. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, slowly bring your body down and head comes down to the ground. Mondukasana. Therapeutic asanas. Able to sit down in a squatting pose. See, in the morning, I wake up in the morning, I'll show it to you tomorrow. For daily routine, sit down, drink a glass of water. Put your hands together, separate your fingers. Fingers get relaxed. Relax your wrist. Put one elbow inside, other elbow inside. Bring your body close to you. It's a wonderful practice. Once you're comfortable sitting here, keep your spine straight, eyes closed, breathe out longer than breathing in, no disease will come to you. From here, another sign of a good sign of health is able to get up without support. When you are able to get up without a support, and it has been shown in a multiple clinical studies that that is a a wonderful sign of your health. So what you what you need to do in this posture that you are able to sit down and get up, especially the balancing. So you are comfortable standing like this. You practice put your both the feet together, spine straight, the ear, your shoulder, your hip, and ankle in the same line. Cross your feet, crossing your feet, if you can, sorry, cross your feet, if you can sit down and get up without a support. Practice it. This will be essentially therapy and you'll see once the yoga therapy starts working, three things will happen. Your requirement of the pharmaceutical support will come down. To be able to enjoy a disease-free life and a better quality life. Crossing my feet and able to get up with other support. Finally, when you are more comfortable doing it, you will be able to get up all the way from the ground. You can sit down all the way to the ground. Initially it is a little difficult, but you will get used to it. Ground and then you'll be able to get up with our support. Once you're in the standing posture, always remember, put your body is like a stick or just yashan. Once you do it, it'll be permanent cure for your back pain, knee pain, hip pain, and a permanent for your relaxation response. When you get a relaxation response, your peripheral resistance comes down, your blood pressure comes down, heart rate comes down, it's a wonderful practice. I wake up in the morning, I'll go against the wall and keep my body, keep my body against the wall 
or maybe here, or maybe it's the wind. There's a mirror here, put my whole body high up, straight. Practice balancing poses. Balancing poses are very important. Balancing poses for the relaxation. You can do, you'll be seeing, you'll be more practicing. You'll be seeing a lot of lay down poses, face down. Say face down, all the poses for back bends in the neck. Those are for your, say, back pain. For the back pain, supported back bend. So balancing both the best way to do it, say the hand helps your balance because if you fall down, remember you fall in the one hand. If you can put your hand in a prayer pose to the back, then I'm right-handed, right-footed, see if I can stand on my left foot. If I can stand on my left foot, initially the problem, you can touch something, you can touch into a chair or a wall, but just to show you how to do it. Hands way to the back. I'm standing on my left foot. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 40 seconds. And finally, almost impossible initially, but you can do it. Close your eyes if you can do it. If you can close your eyes and stand on one foot, you literally overcome all the chronic diseases in your body. Diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. It is a wonderful, it's a relaxation. It's a function of your endothelial health. Do it on the right side. I'm on the right foot. Close my eyes. I'm standing on my right foot. Another one is called Kapalvati Pranayam. Kapalvati Pranayama. You don't do any pranayama practice standing up. Kapalvati Pranayama is It's a relaxation response. So what you can do, you can do a say, say Brikasa, triples. You can do triples here, or you can bring your feet away high up for the triples. And from here, if you can put your hands to the back as a prayer pose, and break a palm at the So you understand, I'm going to show it to a little bit technique how to incorporate different asanas and pranayamas all together for therapeutic. Putting your head down, put your head below your heart. When you put your head below your heart, pressure inside the head goes high up. Pressure inside the eyes goes high up, pressure inside the neck goes high up. But if we keep your head down, slowly and slowly, pressure in the head will come down, pressure in the eyes comes down, neck comes down. You're in a profound level of, which is called baroreceptor sensitivity and your Chemoreceptor sensitivity goes down, baroreceptor sensitivity goes up, your blood pressure comes down. So take a look. This is called your separated forward bend or the prasharito stanashan, and you are so relaxed you'll be able to do your the breath of fire, kapalvati pranayama. I'm going to put my feet all the way across for us to the hands. Slowly put the head down. For us, we'll be able to put our head all the way down on the ground. Holding the feet. Doing the palm with the pranayama. So remember the techniques we are going to do it. The <coughs> Kapalvati Pranayamas are 
we do the morning jal neti. So when you jal neti, when you do kapalbhati pranayama, you always get some drainage comes out from your nostril. It is entirely normal, don't worry about it, but do a washing your nose every morning. We do laying down asanas. All the laying down asanas we do primarily will be will be practicing more and more so you'll see more laying down asanas are activate your we call it a jathar agni digestive fiber it improves your digestive fire it helps digesting your food which we'll talk about tomorrow when the food is digested you get your final product is called ojas which is your immune system actually the whole practice of yoga as a therapy you will see when you look at the whole body we connect with the ayurveda and ayurveda says that agni deepana you ignite your digestive fire ama prachan ama is a toxic toxic substance arises non-digestion of the food you digest your all the toxins Nadi Shodhana cleanses your all the channel and Oja Sthapan. Oja is your immunity. Let's do a little pranayama practice when our body is relaxed. Pranayama is a voluntary regulated breathing. Did you see when I do sit on one side I also cross my feet. You always breathe through your nostril. Do not breathe through your mouth. When you breathe through your nostril, see how simple it is. Let me do one time and I'll show it to you. Always breathing, you have to be relaxed. You know, your whole body, muscles. Yeah, you know, people say, oh, I have a respiratory problem. I have asthma, I have a COPD. I'm going to do a pranayama practice. You won't be able to do it because your mind is very anxious, restless. When you know you cannot breathe. The body needs to be relaxed. My eyes are closed. I'm visualizing. I'm in a state of meditation. I'm visualizing and breathing in through my nostril. My nose are my personal filter, filtering all the air. My nose is like my personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it is cooling it down. Outside air is cold, it is warming it up. Air is going to the side of the nostril called a turbinate. It's creating a vortex. Air is going over the mucosa of the sinuses towards your larynx. In the mucosa of the sinuses, with the vortex, it secretes a substance called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a powerful vasodilator. It is also an activator of parasympathetic tone. The activator of parasympathetic tone or cyclic GMP, acetylcholine, nitric oxide. It is coming all the way behind your throat upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung, lower part of the lung. It is going all the way down to your level of belly button. Hold the breath for a while. This is called your cable cum hoc. Visualize breath is coming from lower part of the lung, middle part of the lung, upper part of the lung, behind your throat, coming out through your nostril. Breath picks up prana, the life force. In our yoga, whole body does the breathing. The breath taking the prana to the organ of healing. I have a problem with my heart, the prana is coming to the heart. I have a diabetes, I visualize prana is coming to my pancreas. I have a back pain and visualizing prana is coming to my back. 
to do the Kalpranic healing. It's a wonderful experience. Do not breathe through your mouth. If you through your mouth, you don't know where the air has gone. But if he at all has to breathe through your mouth, you can breathe in through your nostril. You can breathe out through your mouth. So the moment you do the breathing through your nostril, breathing out longer than breathing in, slowly and slowly you develop a phenomena called neuroplasticity. And when the neuroplasticity sets in, you develop, you breathe like this even when you are sleeping. It's a wonderful experience. First pranayama is called a Bastrika bellows. Bellows you are called active inhalation, active exhalation. You do it you do an asana practice. You can do it like this, breathe in, breathe out. To balance also you can do breathe in here, breathe out here. You do slowly and completely effortlessly as if you can do your normal breathing. You could even sit up, breathe in, breathe out, sit up. You can put your hands high up, breathe in, slowly bring it down. When you bring it down, be sure you do it in a, like a baby fist. When you do it slowly, slowly we start progressing. I'm progressing it to show it to you so your patience will progress. So once you do it slowly, then you can do slow speed, medium speed, and a rapid speed. We do it 20 each in a cycle. We do it about three or four cycles because of the time frame. Let's do just one cycle, 10 of each, and you'll see how simple it is. 10 very slow bastrika to hand salya. They're very good for pulmonary disease, like asthma, COPD, pulmonary fibrosis, and even for the COVID-19 now, which affects your lung. Then you increase the speed, but remember you are still effortless. Effortless means you can talk, you can even sing. Medium speed, 10. It brings your the breathing faster and faster, but also builds up your breathing. Faster ten. It improves your lung function. What does lung function has to do with the healing? So think about it. A person who is dying, what do you say? Person is dying, we say person expired. Last breath comes out. Lung stops and the heart stops. When the heart stops and the brain stops. When the brain stops, all the cellular function stops. Able to improve your lung function, you improve your heart function. Improve your brain function. Improve your all cellular function. Diabetes, pancreatic beta cells are secreting enough insulin by able to improve your pulmonary function, you're able to improve your beta cell function. You can do it in a very rapid speed and then with the rapid speed, remember, all the speed has nothing to do. What it has to do is effort, as if it's a normal breathing. So let me show it to you, a little sample. We do it every morning practice for a long time. I do it 500 Bastrika Pranayama. Let me show you a count of 50 or 100. So how easy it is. Put my hand in a baby fist. This is your relaxation. 
This is a daily practice we do. so easily. I'm talking, I'm breathing, no effort in it. I do 500, 600 daily. I had open heart surgery 20 years back, but I overcome everything with this pranayama practice. This is the gateway of pranayama. Now my whole lung is completely empty. What I do, this is called a three stages breathing, yogic breathing, called dirghashash. Breathe out first, breathe in, Three steps. The lower part of the lung fills up. It's almost like almost a belly button. Middle part, chest opens up. And the upper part of the lung, the clavicle raises higher. Once you have this breathing, you have, this is called prano pradhan pranayama. It brings the prana inside your body. Next, the kapalbhati pranayama. This is a daily practice. You have a balloon here, dive from here, a balloon here. Bring your awareness in the belly button, push it in, and you will see it will hit the diaphragm, hit the lung, the air will come out. You use the hand mudras. This is called your dhano mudra, gano mudra. Called the Vayu Mudra, this controls your pain, it quiets your mind. This is your Shunna Mudra, it helps your hearing. Prithivi Mudra for obesity and diabetes. This is your Varun Mudra for the bladder function, fluid function of your body. The Prana Mudra, the Shakti Mudra brings a strength in your body. Apra Mudra, the Pashan Mudra helps in your digestion. Put index finger down. Apna Vayu Mudra. It is called a Ridai Mudra, a Heart Mudra. Touch with this two finger. This is called your Vayana, Vayana Mudra. Touch with three. This is your Udana Mudra, Linga Mudra. We do all the mudras with the pranayama. So sit down, close your eyes. We do generally 25 to 50 Kapalbhati pranayama in each mudras. But I just want to show you a little sample. Pushing my belly button in the back, eyes are closed, spine is straight. It is an active exhalation, hitting the diaphragm, and the lung is getting empty. There is no inhalation. I'm breathing in in between your exhalation without knowing. You don't teach anybody how to breathe in. They learn how to breathe in already. It's a breathing out. So we'll do the same practice for with all the mudras. So did. You bend your index finger down, Vayu Mudra, another 20, but let's be sure another 10. You keep on doing it with me, I'll tell you the benefits. It massages all the internal organs, massages your liver, massages your stomach, massages your spleen, massages your pancreas, massages your small bowel, massages your colon, Massages your prostate gland. For women, massages your uterus, ovaries, tubes. And it keeps switching you to mudras. And mudras brings the prana to the organ of healing. And pranayama, pranayam. Pranayam controls the prana. It's a synergistic action. It also hits the diaphragm, hits the two lungs bases and all the 
all the toxic gases inside the lung comes out. Detoxifying pranayama. This is a voluntary removal of toxin in your body. Remember body toxin, you have a stool, you have a urine, you have perspiration, which this have effect. But here, voluntarily, you can remove all the dirty gases you have in the lung. Between the lung, there's an organ called heart, and it massages the lower part of the heart. When the heart doesn't work, we do what we call a CPR, called cardiopulmonary resuscitation. When you do cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you massage the heart, the heart starts functioning properly. Here also you do, you massaging the heart from inside, we call it internal CPR. It's a wonderful for the people with the heart disease. Continue how long? Initially, as long as your body will allow with a breath to be had any effort, it could be 10 seconds, it could be 30 seconds, could be a minute. If you can do it, do it in 5 to 10 minutes. Daily practice, one hour practice, we do 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. And remember, meditation will come to you. It's called Agni Pradhan Pranayama, it ignites your Agni, it is a metabolic. All the metabolic diseases, you have a high cholesterol, when you do it, you see cholesterol will come down. You have high sugar, come down. Yoga thinks the diabetes is nothing, but body cannot digest sugar. So it helps in digesting your sugar. Balancing both sides of the brain is the most important yogic practice, because remember we did all the balancing poses when you did the your gomukhasan both sides has to be equal. We do equal in both sides. Sitting like this, and we're also sitting like this. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain, right nostril is controlled by the left brain. So you do alternate nostril breathing, onurom vilom pranayama. Close your right nostril, you don't have to close all the way down, just close underneath, breathe out through your left nostril. Use a hand mudra, dhana mudra, gana mudra on the left side, breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril, close your left nostril, breathe out to your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril, close your right nostril, breathe out through your left nostril. And you keep on doing on your own without any effort. Let me tell you the benefit. Left nostril is controlled by the right brain. Right brain is intuitive. Right brain is female. Right brain is cooling, parasympathetic. Left nostril breathing is called cooling, chandranari, moon energy, parasympathetic, female energy. I don't know. Right nostril is controlled by the left brain. Left brain is analytical, left brain is heating, left brain is male. Right nostril breathing is called sympathetic. It is heating, it's called sun energy, suranari, pingala, male. Activates both sides of the brain. Wonderful practice to control hypertension. Practice for your neuropsychiatric disorders. Practice to all autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases imbalance your immune system. Balance. Next to you, put your index finger and middle finger in between third eyes. Bring your awareness to your third eye. Left your left hand, hold on to your right ear low. This is called your super brain yoga. It balances your both side of the body, then you breathe out through your left nostril, breathe in through your left nostril, close your left nostril, breathe out through your right nostril, breathe in through your right nostril, breathe out through your left nostril. Continue as long as you can 
without any effort. If you can do it, do it 5 to 10 minutes and also for the purest, you can do it on the other hand to make the balance. These three basic pranayama, Vastrika, Kapalbhati, Unulom Vilom Pranayama is there for daily practice. Prepare our body with a Sthiram Sukham Asanam and then you'll see when you do this pranayama, you see whole body like a breath holding. We do one breath holding in inhalation, breath holding in exhalation. We do during our sleep and you'll see we sleep like a baby. We sleep like a yogis. And that's the way once you sleep, you get better and better. So if you get a breath holding, it's called a chin lock. Take your chin, slowly bring it down and touch your chest. It activates both sides of your carotid sinuses. It's called a chin lock. It's called bandhas, Jalandhar Bandha. Then you have a breath holding in exhalation called Udhyani Bandha. You breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and hold. Prepare breath holding and exhalation, breath holding and inhalation, it improves your lung function. So it's, let me show you this called Murcha Pranayam. It is so relaxing, it is the meditation. See, remember meditation will come to you. You don't have to meditate, meditation will come to you. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath, bring your chin down, touch your chin to the chest and keep counting as long as you can hold it. It is so relaxing, it will put you to sleep, it reduces your blood pressure, reduces your heart rate. It's wonderful practice. For the massage of the abdomen, it's called Agni Kriya. You put, breathe out, put your stomach in, then massage the whole abdomen. I'll show you one time, you'll see how it looks like. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out, suck your stomach in and move. All that to remember after all the vital <coughs> organ, all the diseases are here abdomen. It will help. Called Udar Karshan. It massages your abdomen. Mulaband, you contract your pelvic floor, anal canal, pull it up and hold it. It's like your, like a kegel maneuver. Wonderful, wonderful thing. You do the primary pranayama. I want to show you bumblebee breathing. Put it closes your five senses and create a vibration. I showed it at the beginning and very important. You can do Ujjayi Pranayam. During Ujjayi Pranayam, you can incorporate. It is so relaxing, you'll see your stomach will go in. It is called your Udhyani Band. Then you can bring your chin down, do your Jalandhar Band, chin lock, and then at the end, you breathe through your nose, left nostril. All are an activation of your parasympathetic tongue. There cannot be a better practice than a yoga therapy of a practice like this. Let me show it to you one time and you will see how powerful technique it is. 
Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Can't have any better practice than relaxation. Ujjayi pranayam itself, <coughs> it massages your thyroid gland. It helps in your laryngeal function. <laughs> practice every day. <coughs> For all the chronic diseases, Ujjayi pranayam is a wonderful practice. You do the breath holding and also you practice called a your pranavo pranayam. Let me show you one. You are laying down poses. We'll show you later on. Your all the asanas laying down will be your say court pose, loka asana. Your uh, bridge pose, satubandha asana, jathatvari asana, pavan mukta asana, and face down will be your Markadasan, Bhujangasan, Shalabhasan, Dhanurasan, those are for your back beds. Sleeping is the most important component of the yoga therapy practice because once you sleep, you get rid of, you know, primarily you get rid of your the metabolic. Remember, sleep apnea and insomnia is the root cause of all of our trunkal obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. You will first sleep like a baby. So you say how the baby sleeps. Baby will sleep when you lay down. You know, if you if you put your head down, be sure your chin is a little below. Don't put your chin very high up. It is like a sympathetic. If you need to put a little pillow, it's fine. All the baby sleeps, you will see the baby hand, they'll thumb inside and close, and then they bring the feet. This is called Supta Bodha Konasana. This is the way baby sleeps. Fit together, near both. If you have a problem, you can put it to pillows underneath. Next you bring a breathing technique. Breathing out longer than breathing in. The moment I do, I start sleeping like this, then I breathe out first. I will breathe in with a count of four in, count of eight out. I will do it about five to ten times. Let me show you a couple of times how to do it. Then I keep on increasing. Count of five in, count of ten out. Count of four in, count of eight out. Count of five in, count of ten out. Very easy for me. I will do it few times. Then I will incorporate a breath holding. The way to do the breath holding is I will be breathing in with a count of four in. Count of 16 hold, count of 8 up. When I'm increasing slowly, I will go a count of 5 in, hold the count of 20 and breathe out count of 10. Let me show it to you first. And 1 is to 4 is to 2. Breathe out first. Breathe in with a count of 4 in. Hold your breath, count of 16.
Breathe out with the count of eight out. Now we'll go to the five. Count of five in, 20 hold, 10 out. Count of five in. Hold it for count of 20. Breathe out with the count of 10 out. The moment I do it four or five times, already for sleep, what it does, it causes CO2 narcosis. The carbon dioxide builds up because the narcotic effect. You already fall halfway asleep. Then slowly you turn your right side initially and do it like a, your <clears throat> fetal position, put your hand, you may put a little pillow or in a yogi you will put your hands high up like this. Initially, they call right side, so left nostril is opened up with the right side, left nostril is cooling, initially the body core temperature is high up, it helps cooling down the temperature. Then you sleep on your left side, Yogis don't have any pillow, they put the hand like this. I have been doing it for a long, long time. I sleep like this, it's a wonderful practice. In a sleep, all the muscles get relaxed, your body core temperature comes down, it's a balancing practice, right nostril is heating, now the heat balances the core temperature down. Then you fall asleep very shortly, and remember the sleep is not, then when you get up, take your one feet higher, slowly put your body higher and sit down and slowly get up one step at a time. It's not the how long you sleep. It's the quality of your sleep. Sleep has two, called a REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, non-REM sleep. Rapid eye movement, mind is still awake. Non-rapid eye movement is a sleep which causes the repair of your internal organs during sleep. Sleep has a cycle of stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. Stage 3 and stage 4 are the one which you need. So normally, REM sleep is 25%, non-REM 75%. So if you're eating, if you're sleeping for a, say, if you sleep in 8 hours, so 25% will be 2 hours will be REM, 6 hours will be non REM. Out of 6 hours, 50%, 40 to 50% is deep sleep. So you really need both be hardly between 2 to 3 hours of a good deep sleep for a proper sleep. And that's what all the yogis do, we are doing so relaxed and so clear. So you finish, you know, as I said, meditation is the quieting down your mind. What meditation is, that you have a thought process, you generate a thought process throughout the whole day. Thousands and thousands of thought processes, but most of the thought processes are in the past, some thought processes in the future, very little in the present. But even in the present, 95, a lot, majority of them are going to repeat thought process. I have to come, I have to teach. I have to, see, I'm talking here, hour and a half or two hours, my mouth is still wet. I still have a saliva in my mouth. I didn't touch any water, nothing. That is called your parasympathetic activation. Wonderful practice. In meditation, you go in between the thought process and you widen the gap in between the thought process. So the thought process is still there. So you get into the widens it up and slowly or slowly you enter into a state where your blood pressure comes down, heart rate comes down, all the physiological parameter comes down. When you touch your finger, you can clearly feel the capillary pulsation, clearly feel 
So it will all automatically come to you when you prepare your body and breath. If you sit down, I want to meditate, I want to sit down, close my eyes and then breathe in. The body is not ready, so you feel all the, all the discomfort in your physical body. Breath is not ready, it's going to wake you up, your mind is never going to be. Let's finish with the pranayama, call it pranavu pranayama. Pranavu pranayama is a three-stage breathing. Actually, it's a component of OM called A, U, MA. This mudra called Hano mudra, Gano mudra, when you take your hands high up, meditation mudra, when your hand comes down, this is called a chin mudra. Chin mudra opens the lower part of the lung. If you close your hand, it is called a chin mai mudra. It opens the middle part of the lung. And if you do a adhi mudra, hand down, it opens upper part of the lung. Lower part of the lung is with the a, middle part is the u, upper part is the ma. Let's finish our practice today with the pranapha pranayam. And remember, the incorporating your yoga therapy to Western medicine. A person with Western medical diagnosis comes, prepare him first with the spine straight, quiet down your mind with the hand mudras and relaxation of the physical body, able to hold the posture for a longer time, completely effortlessly breathing out longer than breathing in. Therapeutic asana is called the sthiram sukham asana, stillness, happiness in the asana. Breathing completely effortless, breathing out longer than breathing in. Bastrika pranayama, bellows, kapalbhati pranayama, breath of fire, alternate nostril breathing, ululum dulum pranayama, dhamri pranayama, bumblebee breathing, ujjayi pranayama, your victorious breathing. There is also a shankha pranayama, which is a resistive exhalation, and your own pranayama for your chanting and meditative pranayama. You totally, totally enter into a meditation and meditation is medication. Let me show the Shankha pranayama. Shankha is blowing a function. It's a resistive exhalation. It tremendously builds up your pulmonary function. You do your, your the called Adhi Mudra or a baby face put on in the top. You breathe up. Also, there is a lot of pranayama, like Sitali pranayam, cooling, Breathe your through the tongue and we'll, we'll show it to you later and later. But let's show you Shankar. You breathe out first, breathe in through your nostril and breathe out through your mouth and get resistant. One more time. Let's finish with the Pranaho Pranayam. Chin Mudra. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Uh, Chinmay Mudra. Adhi Mudra.
Slowly grab your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, take the hands like a cup, put it over your eyes, let the eyes take all the heat from your hand, then massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face, it removes all the wrinkles, removes all the frowning line, massage the back of your ear, front of your ear, external ear canal, it activates the auricular branch of the vagus nerve, massaging the front of your neck, it activates the carotid sinus, which also activates your vagal tone to the glossopharyngeal nerve, massages in the back, insertion of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscle supplied with the cranial nerves. It's a wonderful practice. When you incorporate that, you will have a few things. First, you will have a reduction of the pharmaceutical support. We have hundreds and hundreds of patients who are getting, reducing the dose. If you don't do yourself, you go to your doctors. So doctors will see your blood pressure started coming down, they'll reduce your medication for your blood pressure. Your blood sugar is coming down, they'll reduce your medication for your blood sugar. You have a disease-free life. Enjoy quality living. Yoga therapy is not a quantity, it's a quality. Thank you again for participating in our CME program. And I will come back uh, at uh, Eastern time at 12 o'clock in about 45 minutes. I'll be presenting the role of yoga in our, in our Western medicine. It will be basically how you're integrating yoga therapy with our Western medicine. I wrote a book called Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine. You can always go to Amazon, it is there and find it. So enjoy. Next weekend is your Memorial Day weekend. Probably it will be a family time, but I'll let you know for the next Saturday class. Thank you for participating. We'll see you again.